Having said that, let's just focus on today's session and topic for the today's session is the NPK fertilizer. This is again very much important question for the exam point of view from this chapter. The concept of NPK fertilizer is need to be understand before we discuss anything about it. Well, the production of this trade fertilizer such as calcium ammonium nitrate that is also been known as the CAN or urea or we can say single superphosphate that is your SSP are very well established process and they are very much simple or we can say that they are well defined products and process for such product are also being well defined. But when it comes to the specific type of NPK fertilizer which is more complex process. As you can see here that complex fertilizers such as NPK are more difficult to define as it is an infinite number of NPK ratio and the process applied in their production are numbers. So this ratio of NPK can differ in many ways and their production method also differ in many ways as their ratio changes. So what is this NPK stand for? Of course N you can see here that N refer for the nitrogen which is required in the early stage of the plant growth. Then we have phosphorus which is required for the generation of the starch and cellulose material. And lastly we have K which stands for the potash. So combinedly this thing become NPK and their different ratio can be represented as here you can see that with this example as 8 to 1 which means there is 8 percentage of the nitrogen, 2 percentage of the phosphorus and 6 percentage of the potash. So this ratio can be changed as per the requirement of the plant. It can be 16, 30 to 16 or it can be anything. So we can say that it is very much complex process as there is a number of ratio are being available for the NPK fertilizer. So this is why we have said that the complex fertilizers such as NPK are more difficult to define because this ratio can be changed as per the requirement of the plants. Hence their production method are also differ from the many others. So there is not specific well defined method in order to produce NPK. So now having said that let's just understand what are the different manufacturing process for this NPK fertilizers. As you can see here on the screen there are four different methods that are being used for the manufacturing of different NPK fertilizers. This, this production method again depend on the which type or the what kind of a ratio of NPK is we are going to require. So the first production method is the nitrophosphate method in which which are the basically we are going to use this NPK fertilizer with the mix acid rules. With the mix acid rule. So in this particular method we use mix acid that is your phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid in order to get this nitro, nitrophosphate. So this process mainly focus on the nitrogen and phosphorus content of the fertilizer. So as if your requirement is that it requires higher ratio of the nitrogen and phosphorus then we have to use this particular method. Then the next method is that is ammonium phosphate method or we can say ammonium nitrate based NPK fertilizers. So in which we are more focused on the nitrogen compound right. So we, we can use this second method. Then there is again nitrophosphate method for the production of the NPK fertilizer. But this is the different method in which we use ODDA rule, right. Then there is a last method which is the mechanical blending of the single or multiple nutrient component in which we mechanically mix all the compound of the NPK fertilizer and define the ratio of NPK that is a nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. So among all the methods this first method that is our mix acid route is being largely used for the manufacturing of the NPK fertilizer. And we will understand this particular method for the production of NPK fertilizer in detail. So again this mix acid route is very important for the exam point of view as well. So now having said that let us just understand what are the different raw materials that we are going to need in order to produce NPK fertilizer of different ratios. Again their quantitative requirement can be varied as per the requirement of nitrogen, phosphorus and phosphate. 
So here your basic raw materials are same. As you can see here, we are going to use the phosphate rock in order to get the phosphate. Then the nitric acid, sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid, which are combinedly known as the mix acid. Then we are going to use for the ammonia for the requirement of the nitrogen compound. As we very well know that ammonia is be largely used for the source of the nitrogen. And then lastly, we will have potash. So these are the basic raw materials that we are going to need in order to produce NPK fertilizer. Again, let me tell you this quantitative requirement can be varied or can and can be changed as per the requirement of the plants. Now, having said that, let's just quickly see the flow sheet for the production of the NPK fertilizer. As you can see here, this process starts from this point. And we use three different reactors for three different processes. In the very first reactor, we fed our phosphate rock and nitric acid in order to decompose phosphate rock, right? So ultimately with this reactor, we can digest our phosphate rock with the nitric acid. As we have very well know that nitric acid is highly concentrated acid. So it can easily digest the compound of the phosphate in the phosphate rock. So you can see here that this digestion tank is being used. Since this reaction is highly exothermic, so we have to provide jacket and circulate cooling water in order to remove all the exothermitivity of the reaction. So all the reaction heat can be removed with the help of jacketed reactor. And inside which we also provide agitation. So here you can see that we have also provided agitation so we can achieve proper mixing of this layer. Then the product stream coming out of this first reactor is directly sent to the second reactor. Which is known as the ammonization reactor. In which we add phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid and ammonia. In short, all the remaining raw material are directly sent to the this reactor. So, product coming out of the first reactor, that is your phosphate slurry, and all the remaining acid and ammonia are being mixed in this ammonization. This reaction is also being exothermic, so we have to also supply jacket and cooling water outside this. And continuous mix, continuous stirring is also being provided. Now, the product from the ammonization is sent to the neutralizing tank in which we add acid to neutralize this product and this product coming out of the neutralizer is sent to the granulator. But let, but before discussing this granulator, the product gases coming out of the three reactor are sent to the scrubber. So as you can see here that we are using nitric acid, all the unconverted acid or the gases we are sending to the scrubber as we cannot directly send this gas outside atmosphere. So we have to scrub all the acidity before it leaves the plant. So we are absorbing this nitric acid with the help of water and this liquid is again sent back to the second reactor for the ammonization purpose. And off gases are directly sent to the atmosphere. Since now they are not containing any acid content because we have washed it or we can say we have scrubbed it with the help of water. So again the gases coming out of the ammonization are being sent to the second scrubber. As you can see here, as you can see here, this all the gases are directly sent to the scrub and which are also being scrubbed with the help of water. Now moving to the granulator, product coming out of the neutralization tank is sent to the granulator which produces fine granules of the product. And then this NPK fertilizer is sent to the dryer in which we dry this fertilizer with the help of hot air in order to remove all the moisture content. Then this product or the gases are sent to the cyclone separator where we remove all the dust particles and gases are again sent to the scrubber as you can see here which mix from the stream coming out of the neutralization tank. So gases from neutralization tank and the gases or dust particles from this cyclone separator are mixed and sent to the scrubber in order to remove all the acidity of the product stream. Now after dryer, the product coming out of this dryer are now sent are now sent to these screens where we separate this oversized and undersized particle with the help of mechanical operation. And the oversized particle are sent to the cyclone separator to remove all the dust. And the product coming out of the screens are sent to the coating unit in which we use the coating agent to increase the reactivity of the NPK fertilizer. 
and lastly we get npk fertilizer as a product so this is your entire pro process diagram or we can say flow sheet for the production of the npk fertilizer which is again very important for the exam point of view so let me just quickly revise entire flow sheet let me take a pen first as you can see here this particular method start from this point in which we add our phosphate rock and nitric acid here you can see that the nitric acid in the digestion tank with the proper stirring and and the jacketed provided on the outer periphery of the reactor as this reaction is highly exothermic in which decomposition or we can say digestion of the phosphoric rock phosphoric rock take place and we produce phosphoric slurry with the help of this reactor and the gases coming out of this reactor is now directly sent to the scrubber from here right and the product stream coming out of this reactor as you can see here is now sent to the ammonization in which we add all the remaining acid and ammonia for the purpose of the reactor and mix it with and mix it with the proper stirring again this reaction is also exothermic so we have to supply jacketed reactor and the product stream coming out of this reactor is now sent to the neutralization tank in which we neutralize it with the help of acid and then this product is followed by the granulators in which we produce the fine granules of the npk fertilizer then they are dried with the help of dryer and with the help of hot air and this outlet of the hot air is passed to the cyclone in order to remove dust particle and directly mix with the uh, stream coming out of the ammonization tank and sent to the scrubber after the drying this product is now sent to the mechanical operation for the screening in which we separate the dust particle and send to the cyclone separator and combine with this uh, combine with this stream and go to this scrubber and product stream coming out of the screen is sent to the uh, coating is sent to the coating unit in which we coat with the different coating agent to increase the reactivity of the fertilizer so this was all about the process diet now let's just see the, what is the process description for this process as you can see here that phosphate rock and nitric acid are fed to the digester unit to give phosphoric acid and calcium nitrate as we have seen in the process flow sheet we are using nitric acid and phosphate rock in this particular reactor now after that this product sent to the ammonization reactor where we add ammonia phosphoric acid sulfuric acid and potash now after this ammonization mass is being sent to the neutralization reactor where we maintain ph around 5 to 6 by adding different acids now the product coming out of the neutralization reactor is sent to the granulator and followed by the dry which in which we use hot dry air the upper stream from the dryer is now sent to the cyclone separator to remove dust particle associated with this air and after drying the screening is being performed to get finely utilized or same size of the particles that can be used directly as the npk fertilizer and they are being coated with the mixture of organic and inorganic powder as coating agent in the coating drug or we can say coating unit so after this coating unit we get our npk fertilizer of the required composition or we can say required ratio so this was the entire process description for the production of the npk fertilizer this production method can be easily understood with the help of the flow sheet as if you have understand flow sheet very well you can easily write different points in the production method or we can say process description so now this conclude the npk fertilizer and it also conclude the chapter of the sulfuric acid and fertilizer industry in this particular fertilizer industry we have seen different product that are being used for the fertilizer purpose